I'm really excited to get started on the next test, of course, to get the robocalls working in series. Um, there's a bit of wiring to do, so I need to tackle that first. Uh, and then I'll want to touch base with you guys and show you how the wiring setup is, uh, is done. It's, of course, everything is very uh, minute and, and small, so it doesn't really communicate via video all that well. Um, but at least you can get the gist of it. And if there are any questions or if you guys are doing something similar, then you can just hit me up with, uh, with those on the message board on uh, Rover's site or on YouTube. And I'll try to tackle them from there. Uh, so yeah, so again, so the next test is basically to get the Arduino to talk to not just the one motor controller controlling two motors, but both um, RoboClaw motor controllers talking to all four uh, primary motors. We're also going to be involving both the primary batteries, one and two. Uh, in the previous test, you saw the one um, LiPo pack. Um, we've now got the two uh, packs, uh, each feeding into <clears throat> the one side of the rover via a DC to DC power module. Uh, so there's a bit of wiring, and we're also going to have to update the code controlling the relays uh, to flip not one, but two. Um, relays uh, so that we can send power from the second LiPo battery pack over to the second RoboClaw motor controller. So let's uh, get started. Prior to getting started with the next test of the two RoboClaw motor controllers in series, I wanted to give you a, a kind of a lay of the land of how we're setting this test up. So what you're looking at here is the additional wiring that we've done. Uh, to set up the communication between the Arduino and the two RoboClaw uh, motor controllers. So you'll remember that we were dealing with those blue and yellow wires. So now we've got two sets of those. And you'll notice that we've got an additional diode here. One is facing to your right, and the other, the, the higher one on the screen, is facing left. Um, so basically that's how they're, they're wired in. And that allows the communication, kind of the, the digital signal to flow in one direction uh, from the Arduino to each of the RoboClaw motor controllers. Um, and then the yellow wires are actually uh, the ones going through the diodes. The blue just sync up straight to one another. Um, we've added the other two motors on the other side. Um, We've just got this kind of configuration set up, but they're they're connected into the rover now. The two original motors, you'll remember where they were. Um, to the right of that is the primary battery number one, and then here we've got the primary battery number two that we're going to hook up uh, for the other side of the rover. And then here from above, you're just looking at the overhead shot of the kind of how everything's set up. I wasn't sure if we were gonna get to this test today or not. Uh, it's been a long day already, but I was terribly curious to see if we could get uh, both the motor controllers working. Um, so we've got things wired up now. Uh, let's take a look at the code. So what we're looking at here is the updated code uh, actually, this is the all clear sketch. Uh, so here is the updated code for the RoboClaw encoder test. Uh, so it's times two. Uh, I'll include the updated code, of course, on Robo on Rover's uh, website. Uh, basically, I just made a copy of the test one code and then updated it as necessary. So the first thing is that we've got two addresses, one for each of the two RoboClaws. Um, so they start from a value of 80 and uh, increment up from there. So we've got um, the first one with an address of 80 and the other one with an address of 81. And these are programmed into the board itself. Um, the, uh, the PDF goes over that. Uh, the other thing that um, really threw me off the first time when I tried to work with both RoboClaws was that I assumed that each of them had to be connected to the Arduino independently. Uh, but the whole key here is that you're only using two pins on the Arduino, and the second RoboClaw is getting its 
messaging its commands via the first robocall. So uh, scrolling down from there, we've got the same setup for the relay controls. Uh, here I've included some binary to hex value conversion for reference. Uh, the one that's going to be important for us is this last one. Um, this basically will trigger val uh, relay number one and relay number eight only. It'll leave the others off. So uh, we've left this code here the same except for changing the value uh, as I just mentioned. Um, and then down here where we have the different uh, variable definitions for the RoboClaw, we basically just copied and pasted and then changed values from 1 to 5, from 2 to 6, etc. So basically instead of having four uh, values, we now have eight values uh, to, to basically store the incoming values for the encoders and the speed of each of the now four motors. Um, so basically that just carries through um, in the code here. Um, there's different ways of setting this up. It's not really clean, but uh, it'll do the job for us for the time being. The other thing I just updated was I set the delay for two seconds, for 2,000 milliseconds, uh, just so that uh, it's slow enough for us to get a feel for what's going on in the, in the uh, serial monitor. So now let's, let's send this over to the Arduino. We've already got both battery packs um, hooked in and the USB is already connected. So the light is on, on the Arduino Uno as well as on the, the power indication, the VCC light on the relay board. So sending this through, um, we'll hear the click of the relays flipping on, and then we should have both motor controllers turned on. Um, the, uh, the indicator light for those should go on. And then we can take a look at the serial monitor. So let's, let's give it a go. So uploading. Lights on the Arduino and Awesome. So we've got lights on the relay board for channels 1 and 8, which is how we have the two RoboClaws connected. Um, the power indicated lights are now on on the RoboClaws, so, and they're flickering every two seconds, which should, should suggest that we're seeing something in the serial mo monitor. So we see now that we've got encoders 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, so now let's turn one of the motors. There we go. We're seeing values change. I'm, I'm right now I'm altering uh, motors three and four. So those changed and the holy grail is seeing values for one and two change now. And they are. One of the motors squeaks. So I'm going to have to figure out how to oil it. These are uh, second-hand motors. Uh, but yeah, so success. We've got the Arduino now talking to all four motor controllers, which in turn are controlling, or not, I guess, are reading the encoders properly. Um, so yeah, that's fantastic. So let's uh, get back to the sketchbook here, um, send the all clear message to the Arduino to shut everything off. We should hear the relays flip off. And there it is. Great. Yeah, success. So we've got the Arduino Uno talking to all four motors through the motor controllers. Um, the next step is really to get them to spin on their own. Um, so yeah, that's going to be wicked to see. Uh, I have to decide whether to mount the motors first, but I I think I'm just going to leave them off and uh, test the motors um, not actually mounted on rover yet. Seems how I'm still kind of contemplating how to do that. Uh, anyway, lots of ideas, but uh, terrific, terrific to see the, uh, the boards talking to one another and getting along. And uh, yeah, on to the next project.